In Jesus precious name. I read a passage this morning. That touched me so much. That was Judges chapter 16. Verse 27. Now the house was full of men and women and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made spot. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray you. And strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may at once be avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand, and of the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Gone. Then his brethren all, the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtael in the burying place of Manoah his father and he judged Israel 20 years the Lord bless his word in Jesus name I'm speaking very very quickly on the subject avoiding the enemies of a great destiny And in particular today, that great destiny was the destiny of Samson. Every time you hear about Samson, the first thing that comes to most people's mind is Delilah. But it's far more than that. Delilah was just a terminal consequence of his lifestyle, of his person. Samson was a man whose great destiny could only have been equivalent to the destiny of someone like John the Baptist or someone like Jesus our master. I'm talking about those whose mothers we are told of the implication of the child they were carrying even before the child was the children was conceived Jesus was prophesied John the Baptist was prophesied Samson far before the mother was pregnant was prophesied and even the mother was instructed on what to drink and what not to drink because of the consecration of the child that was in the womb of the mother that was going to be in the womb. It was a great destiny. Many of us, there was nothing said about our birth. But we have a destiny of being great. But Samson, too many things were said about his birth. How come Samson, such a great giant, prophesied for a great destiny, ended as a pauper, ended like chicken, Seven things I am going to say was wrong that was responsible. Number one, he f- what was wrong with that great destiny called Samson? What led to his crash? Number one, he failed to understand the implication of his life. And destiny. He didn't know who he was. He didn't know what he represented. He didn't fully understand what God wanted to do with his life. 
he failed to understand the implication of his life and destiny. If not that he failed to understand, he wouldn't have moved and operated the way he operated. For somebody here, God is saying, is too much to be playing about with prostitutes. Your destiny is too heavy. The money I want to give you is much bigger than the bribe you are trying to collect. Samson fail to understand And if you don't understand who you are, you will never become who you are meant to become. Where you are today is a stepping stone to where you are meant to be. Don't forget. If you don't know who you are, you can never become who you are meant to become. Samson failed to understand that he was a generational deliverer. He failed to understand that the destiny of a nation was on his shoulder. Number two. He failed to understand the principles that should guarantee his great destiny. He failed to understand. The principles, or rather, he failed to uphold the principles that should guarantee his great destiny. He failed to uphold them. Goat does not drink blood. Lions don't eat grass. If you have been designed to be a lion, you feed on what lions feed on. To have the destiny of lions. Eagles don't eat rotten flesh. That is for vultures. If God has designed you to be an eagle, then you don't touch the food of vultures. Something failed to understand that principles make principalities. He failed to understand that there are processes that lead to products. That lead to products. He failed to understand. Someone say loud, Amen. Somebody say louder, Amen. Somebody shout the loud most, Amen. He failed to understand. Brothers and sisters. You don't know where you are going until you know what to do to get there. Don't. So it looks like Samson didn't know where he was going and also did not know what to do to get there. He forgot. He forgot. Number three. He forgot the roots of his greatness. The root. He forgot how and where his life started. 
He forgot the roots. An enemy of a great destiny. When you forget who you were before God pulled you out. When you forget the consecration that brought your manifestation. He forgot the consecration. He forgot the prayers and the fastings and the and the sacrifices of his father and mother that led to him. Are you a pastor, a minister of the gospel? In those days, you used to fast a lot. But maybe now you have arrived. And you don't need to fast and you don't need to pray again. But you are still seeing results. Bad news is, the results you are seeing are being fueled by the effort of yesterday. And if the effort stops, very, very soon, the result will stop. When yesterday's fuel that has been fueling you expires. Never forget where you came from. Where God brought you from. Whatever you did to step in is what you must continue to do to stay in. Did you hear what I said? Whatever you did to step into any realm with God is what you must continue to do to stay in that realm. The way in is the way forward. Hallelujah. He forgot his roots in God. Number five. Number four. He failed to be accountable and submissive to any authority. He failed. There was nobody that was an authority over Samson's life. He listened not to his mother. He listened not to his father. He he had no pastor, no prophet, no priest. He was an authority, a self-made man. And nobody can sustain authority Without being under authority. Nobody can influence without being influenced. Nobody can be a voice who is not connected to another voice. He failed. Worst thing that can happen to anybody on earth. Is to have nobody to tell you sit down. Is to have nobody to tell you kai. He failed. He failed. To be pastorless is to be futureless. Is to be pastureless. He failed. So Delilah wasn't the major problem. If he was under authority, he would have clearly handled Delilah. Hallelujah. He failed to be under authority. He failed to be submissive to anybody. He's an enemy. Number five. He was comfortable with the wrong company. Comfortable. Let me say it in another way. Something was comfortable with the wrong company. He enjoyed the company of his enemies. You are not a bad person, but who are the closest persons to you? You are not a Jezebel, you are not a Delilah. How about your friends? They go out and make money out of prostitution. And share it with you. 
They are fraudulent 419 crooks. And they are your closest friend. They don't go to church. But they don't mind you going to church. Worst thing that can happen to anybody is to be at home in the house of your enemy. Delilah said, is your strength. That is, if we want to kill you, what do we do? But somebody said that to you. You are still there? Don't you start with the person. Comfortable. The wrong company is the eternal enemy of the right destiny. Say it again. The wrong company is the eternal enemy of the right destiny. You cannot company with the wrong association and arrive at the right destination. Number five. Spoke too much to the wrong people. Too much. He spoke too much to the wrong people. He had no capacity to keep the secrets of his life. Many people were destroyed. By the words they gave their enemies. They armed their enemies with their secrets through talking. Finally, he lacked the capacity to control his passion. He lacked the capacity to control his passion. There are different manifestations of uncontrolled passion. Some it is anger and rage. Some it is pride and arrogance. Some it is vanity and emptiness. Some it is immoral living. When your passion is out of control, your future is out of your control. If your passion is out of control, your future is out of control. I heard the story of a man who gave his son a turn, think the map of the world was torn in many pieces on a paper and he asked his boy, little boy to fix it know where this place is, know where that place and join it together and the young boy went and within a few minutes the whole thing was fixed together and he brought it to his father the father said "What? what, what is the secret how? This thing was pieces in many directions. How did you fix it so soon? The boy said, Father, you didn't realize that at the back, the second page, the opposite page of this map was the picture of a man. So all I did was, I looked at the picture, I fixed the man, and then, I, and then that fixed the map. All I needed to do was to fix the man and in so doing I fixed the world. Until your life is in your control. Your world is not in your control. Where passion is out of control, the future is out of control. Where you have no control on what you watch and what you drink and what you what you eat and who, who you company with you lost control of your life 
Hallelujah. Errors of a great destiny it shall not be your error. But the most important question today, who are you? What is the implication of your life? What do you represent? Are you just somebody in a number of, of this in this vast world? Or you are a personality that matter? Are you a symbol of character, a symbol of integrity, a symbol of authenticity of Christianity? Well, who are you? When you pass, what do people think? Those who live in your neighborhood, what is their thought concerning who you are? Family members and relations, what is in their mind about who you are? You don't know who you are. Then who has the right to know who you are? You don't know what you are on earth for. Then who else must care about what you are on earth for? You are just existing in your own eyes. Then you are just existing in the eyes of anybody. Hallelujah. If you know who you are, not everybody can be your friend. Samson didn't know who he was. If you know who you are, not every environment can accommodate you. If you really know who you are, not every dress style is your style. There is some you left for prostitutes. Hallelujah. It's a new day for somebody. And if you are that person, you will say amen. amen. If you are that person, you will say louder amen. amen. Lift your hands and say, Father, show me who I am. And help me to be who you want me to be. Stand up on your feet and say to God, say, Father, show me who I am. And help me to be who you want me to be. Lift your hands up and, and, and just go ahead and speak to God. Father, we give you the praise. Everyone here, be upstanding, be upstanding, be upstanding, be upstanding. Blessed be your name. I have just one life to and it must be refined. Sikete la patoasi 